two rods I like to use are the Ocean Angler Bender and the Ocean Angler Spinder. As you can see, they're specialist slow jig rods with bendy nibble tips. This helps to absorb shock as well as detect bites. The specs for the Ocean Angler Bender are 1.9 meters long, PE 1 to 3, and up to 140 gram jigs. And the specs on the Spinder are 1.82 meters long, PE 1 to 2, and up to 90 gram jigs, so slightly lighter than the Bender. I highly recommend these rods, but any specialized slow jig rod that you choose or you like will work. Um, so there's heaps of brands out there to choose from. The reason you need a specialized slow jig rod is that it helps with bite detection, absorbing the impact when the snapper bite in the nibble tip, and it's going to help your hookup rate and the rate at which you land your fish. Paired up with my bender, which is an overhead rod, I have a Pen Fathom 8. And on this setup, I'm running 20 pound braid and usually between 15 to 30 pound leader, depending on where I'm fishing. As the name would suggest with the spinder, it's a spin setup, so any soft bait size reel will work. I have a pen slammer on here, um, but anything between the range of 3,000 to 4,000 should work. And again, I have this spooled up with 20 pound braid. This is where a spin reel can be more cost effective as you can use a spin reel for a soft bait rod and a slow jig rod. So there's a whole range of different sliding laws that you can use. Um, you can get the sliding kaburas or sliders Heaps of different names for them. And then Ocean Angler obviously stopped the uh, G-Bomb as well, which is another form of sliding law. Um, and then some other brands that you might find, such as the Shimano Lacanus, where they won't be sliding at all. Got a few different types of assisted rigs, which obviously go on the back end of your sliding law. So we'll take a this is an 80 gram sliding head and then you've got the Jelly Baby which is the Ocean Angler sort of bigger bigger form of assist skirt with a bigger profile. Um, I really like these, I find these a bit more effective than the standard skirts to be honest. And um, then you've got your standard skirt which just ties in like that. Nice long fluffy skirt and then more so for your G-bombs, but you can tie it behind a slider. You have these uh, swimming skirts, which have a sort of paddle tail, swim skirt. Part of the fun is all the fun, wacky color combinations you can make. Dropping down the slider. This might be the last fish for the bin. Yeah. Nice one. As you can see here, the action is just a slow, constant wind. Nice and easy. I throw in the occasional fast half turn, and then I pause just to get the uh, skirt fluffing and puffing in the water. I think that imparts a really nice action on the lure. You'll see here I get a few nibbles, and to set the hook rather than striking, it's just another slow, constant wind and a slight lift of the rod. Just to show you again on another clip, this is me again, slightly later in the session. Same action, nice low turns of the reel, and you'll see the nibbles come on nice and easy. Just keep reeling, and a slow lift of the rod, and we're hooked up, just like that. You'll see here, I'm uh, taking it really easy fighting this fish, it's just a nice slow wind. I give it the occasional lift if I feel like it. Um, I'm bringing this fish up for about 55 meters, so sometimes you need a little bit of help, especially when they're a bigger fish. But for the most part, I'm trying to take it really easy on this fish. I'm trying not to pull out the little tiny sharp hooks that are barely set in its jaw from how it's just nibbled at the skirt. It's 
slow and steady really does win the race in this style of fishing. Um, you just got to take it easy on the fish. It's light line, light rods, and light gauge hooks. So take it easy. Enjoy the fight. It's always fun pulling these decent fish up from 50 meters or so. You can fish these lures pretty deep. Um, I'd say 60 is about the deepest I've gone, but I know people that fish well up to 100 and more with their Kabura slash slider style lures. You'll see my glamorous assistant Sean here's got the net ready. Uh, the net's pretty essential for this style of fishing because you don't want to pull hooks oh, trying to pull a decent cool. sized fish up onto the boat. Sean's ready to go for it with the net. You'll see it's coming up here. Here we go. And boom, fish on board. It's a really quality sized fish. I'm um, on super, super light gear, super fun fight. Really, really enjoy the style of fishing. size weight you should be using there's a whole range of um, weights you can get so it's, it can be quite a daunting task I imagine so you can get you know these little tiny little 40 30 60 gram ones whatever they are and sometimes I'll only use these on the kayak in super super glassy conditions when the bites slow as anything other than that I won't even touch them to be honest um, my ethos is generally to go bigger is better because a lot of people tell you try and match certain weights to certain depths but there's too much that comes into it in my mind um, you've got your wind speed, your drift speed, your depth, current all that sort of plays a factor um, but to me the most important part is vertical if I'm jigging vertically uh, 9 times out of 10 I'm getting more bites than if I was to be jigging way out the back or you know from having to cast all the way in front and let it drop without being able to be super in contact with the lure, I'd rather just go heavier. So that my ethos is generally go heavier. Um, in terms of weights, I'll primarily use 80 gram or bigger. This would probably be about an 80 gram size lure. Um, unfortunately, they don't have the lure size on them. I think this is possibly a 120. Um, but yeah, in my mind, Going vertical is the important part. The weight less so. You're better off going 20, 40 grams heavier than you are 20, 40 grams lighter because it's you're better off vertical. In terms of colors, you've obviously got, again, a whole crazy range of colors. You've got yellows, oranges, blacks, pinks. This one's kind of a bit of a rainbowy color. You've got your luminous sort of colors. Um, even got some brands that do ones with bloody light up eyes and stuff. Um, for me, go to number one is always orange. Um, orange works nine times out of ten for me, to be honest with you. Um, orange isn't working. I've had some really nice fish on this color, which is a Rasta, but that's obviously sort of a uh, multi color, rainbowy kind of lore. Um, I think probably, to be honest, skirt-wise, it's more important to choose the right colour. Uh, the head's obviously a little bit of attractant, but for the most part, that's just a weight to get down there. You know, something like this, this, this colour's done really well for me in the past. It's got a lot of UV in there. Um, at 50 metres, sort of block colours, like black and orange, I can't imagine they see all that well, but, you know, a UV big dangly skirt or a big chartreuse skirt like that they also do pretty well they're gonna see that that's that's what they're gonna see and they're gonna see the action you give it so that's the important part for me thanks for watching guys i thought i'd just round this off with a couple of my favorite catches on slow jigs and um, some pretty cool snapper here this one's on a cyclops from ocean angler which is their soft bait slider rig Anyway, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, I'll try my best to answer them in the comments. Uh, make sure you leave a comment and give slider fishing a go if you haven't already. It's super productive, super fun way of fishing, and like I said, super fun, light, 
lightweight gear crack on <laughs>